Hey guys, it's Allison, and today, as you can see, I'm in a bit different of a location than usual. I'm in my kitchen, and that is because today, finally, we're doing the long-awaited, well, at least I've been waiting to do it, my long-awaited apartment tour! <laughs> so, I think I'm just gonna jump straight into the tour, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna go over my rent, why it costs that much, where I kind of live, and the bad things and the good things about the apartment that you can't really just tell from a video. All right, so let's start the tour right from here at my Genkan. Yes, I'm standing in my Genkan, not my kitchen. I know it's hard to see. It's in kind of incredibly small. It's kind of crazy. So my door, my Genkan, it leads directly into the kitchen, which is pretty common in these size of apartment. So you have to make use of all the space you can get. So I have all these magnet storage options on my door, I have some eco bags here, umbrellas, all my bills so I can see them as I'm walking out the door, my keys, my mask for when delivery men come, hat, and the calendar. And before we get into the kitchen, let's take a look over here at the shoe closet. All right, sorry for the weird angle, this is how it is. So here's my shoe closet. It has this mirror, as you can see, but actually the area is too small for me to actually get like a full body image of myself. So I did have to buy another mirror. So I can fit about a dozen pairs of shoes in here. Not bad. I really like having it built in because I don't think I could get this vertical storage otherwise. So, and then here's my kitchen, or at least the beginning of it. Here I have this huge microwave oven. I didn't realize how big it was when I bought it. It's ridiculous. I also have it on this rack. It has like a pull out thing here. And up top I have a toaster oven, I have a kettle, and I have a little basket for like Mekon, things like that. And then down here is my fridge, so it actually opens this way, which is why I bought it in the first place. There aren't that many that are like this, so I did pay a little bit more, but it's totally worth it. Because if it opened on the other side, I wouldn't be able to open it without stepping into the Ginkong. So let's open it up. Yeah, it's not huge, but you know... I live alone and I do eat out sometimes or bring take-home food a lot. And then down here is my freezer. Pretty good size. And I even have a little secret drawer here for ice cream and things. And to the side of the fridge against the wall I keep boxes that I need to recycle and some baking trays for the oven. So when you live in a place that's this small, everything you buy has to have a purpose or some sort of like secret storage type of thing going on. So let me show you how I do that here. So of course I use this side of the fridge to um, use magnets for different things. And then I have this pull out thing. So I just keep like oils and flowers, cleaning things like that in here. And I can rest things on this table thingy. <laughs> and then here is my sink. It's pretty small. Honestly, it's like, it's a little too small. I have this for drying my larger items and then this for things like plates and cups. Right above it I have my water heater, just turn it on. You can change it from this panel, things like that. I can even turn on the bathroom here which I'll show you later. Up here I have my paper towel holder, I have this light, thank god it's here because it gets super dark at night. Ooh, bright. <laughs> and above that I have my little cabinet thing full of my plates, my cups. It's not that well organized. I'm still working on it. And then back down here we have my, what is this, a stove? <laughs> and it has two of these burners, which is actually really good for a 1K unit. And then right here I keep all my spices, some more oils, things like that, my coffee, cutting boards over there. And I do have a hood, you know, it does a standard hood thing, but it has a light, that's nice. <laughs> and this is the cabinet situation below that. It's pretty good size. It's basically my pantry and where I keep cleaning supplies. Some knives here and some more food. Nothing, nothing too interesting. <laughs> so over here is one of the things I had to bring myself in. So as you've seen up to this point, there's basically no counter space. So <laughs> that's where this comes in. I bought like this counter unit that's also a garbage can holder and it has like saved my life for storage. But it did come out at a cost 
other than monetary. Let me show you how. So as you can see, this is actually the doorway right here. So it does cut into the doorway about 30 centimeters or a foot. This does work in the end because this is the re remaining space and it's not probably big enough for like a legal doorway, but I can just walk through. So I keep my little expensive coffee maker here, drink coffee every day. And I have a rice cooker out right now. In the summer, I replaced this machine with a blender for smoothies. And here, a drawer for utensils, amazing. A drawer for random stuff. You know, you just need a drawer full of random stuff. And then, I mean, yeah, sorry, I have garbage in there, but all of these pull out and I have different garbage separations going on because you do have to separate garbage here. And on the side here, I just have this little bag to keep more plastic bags that I use for like little garbage and you know, just random stuff. And under it, I have a step stool. All right, so that's the kitchen. Now let's go over here into my bathroom area. So just stepping in, you can see it has this really cute like marble type of flooring. I mean, it's like a cheap type, but I don't mind it. I think it's really cute. And then right here directly, I have a heater out because it's winter. So I use that for when I take a bath. I hang some laundry thingies here, but they're all in use right now. And this is my washing machine. Yes, I did buy it just because it has this clear top. I just really wanted to see inside. It's kind of fun. And then I have a storage unit here. So I have two baskets for laundry. And then at the top, I have just like my laundry things like laundry net bags, things like that in here. And then like detergent and other laundry things over there. And it does have this hook, so I do hang things here sometimes. And then right over here, ignore the garbage can, it is full. This is my vanity sink area. Quite nice, I do like it. So I do have another one of these pull out things here. Not too much in it right now, but. And then here's the sink. Yay! So I do have a light right here. Very good. I do have a window actually right over here, but it's not that much light because there's like a house directly next to it. And this is great storage. As you can see, I keep the makeup I commonly wear every day in here. And then like my toothbrush, things like that. And over here is another one. Just some more, you know, stuff. <laughs> And below here, we have a big cabinet space, just, you know, full of random stuff. We also have an outlet right here for like the hairdryer. And here's my towel. And moving along, we have my shower and bathtub room. So just stepping in, it's quite nice. This is one of my favorite parts of the apartment. I have a bath stool because once you start to sit while you shower, it's like hard to stop. It's pretty nice. My shampoo, things like that. Another mirror. And then over here is the bathtub. It's a pretty good size, I think. I use this thing to like cover the bath so it can keep the heat in. And I have this pole here because, oh my God, this is amazing. I didn't have this before, but this can, this whole like thing functions as a dryer kind of. So I can just hang all my clothes here and turn on the drying function. And you know, a few hours later, all the clothes will be dry. And this is another hot water panel. Actually, it's a little broken. I don't know why you can't see the numbers, but it talks to you. So if you speak Japanese, you can figure it out. So I do take a bath like every night in the winter. And it's so amazing because it comes out of this thing over here and it actually will keep the bath warm. So it like consistently will spit out hot water if it feels the temperatures dropping. Absolutely amazing. Okay, and stepping out, right here is my like, storage area for the bathroom. I have this like little Japan map my friend bought me of where I've been. As you can see, I have a lot of work to do. Wish I could have done that past year, but you know how it is. This is all the makeup I don't wear because I wear a mask every day. Some towels, another mask like drawer thing and then just like my hand towels and things like that. And then over here, that's my bathrobe and my toilet. So if you can see, I have a Sakura-chan right here. My favorite anime is probably Cardcaptor Sakura. And then stepping in, we have the toilet. 
So yes, it is one of the fancy toilets. It has like the bidet functions and it's a heated seat, which is amazing. And it has like big flush, little flush. Let's do a little flush. Yeah, and the water just comes out the top there, but I don't actually use it to wash my hands because you can't use soap in it. And then directly above the toilet, I have storage, just, you know, toilet paper, tissues. I have this toilet paper holder that holds two, which is great. And I can put my phone here, amazing. And over here is kind of just random storage for things that don't really have another place. Okay, it's finally time to enter my sanctuary, the main room. So what do you guys think? I personally quite like it. <laughs> it's all pink as you can see, that's my favorite color. So let's go through each area one by one and show you how I made a six and a half to Tommy mat sized room into an area with three different like areas. So starting right here is my desk. It's probably the most important practically. I have a little Pokemon Mr. Donut blanket here and my pink Ikea chair. <laughs> I have this desk with like the shelving unit on the side built in. Keep textbooks and things in there. Here is my like pencil area, I guess. <laughs> Here is my precious baby. Got some flowers right now. And over here I have my humidifier out because it's winter and in here I have like gloves and hats and tote bags things like that I have this awesome lamp thing which it functions as a charger and a light <laughs> and a light of course it's a light it's a lamp as you can see the wall is still incomplete if you have any ideas let me know I don't know what to do with the rest of the space and then moving over here we have my closet area which I think is a pretty good size Okay, the closet's like kind of messy, so I won't show you all of it, but here's just like a peek at it. So I have just this whole hanging space right here, and below I have this four level, what do you call it, like a storage thing. And up here I have another shelf, so I keep my purses, my bags all up here, and then some other random stuff. And then out of the closet I have a little bookshelf happening here and some jewelry, which again, I don't wear this year. And then here is my balcony area. I'm actually hanging my clothes out to dry right now. And I don't wanna show you guys the outside anyway, so. But it's there, and as you can see, it's not that big. And here's my bed area. So here's my bed. It is a single bed, which isn't that bad once you get used to it. Most people who are alone, alone, are single in Tokyo, live like, live like this, they sleep like this. I just got this Sailor Moon blanket like yesterday actually at three coins. And then I'm continuing with the rose bedspread thing. Some pillows, little cat humidifier scent thingy, all my stuffed animals. And they are actually all on top of my suitcases, which you can't see. And then I do have more storage under the bed. It's not that high of a bed but the color, if you noticed, really matches with the flooring. So just like that, I do have some pants down here, things like that. And then over here is my mirror, hi! So it does have some storage behind it. I keep my scarves down there. That's my gym bag, don't go that much. And then over here is the most relaxing area of my apartment. I, by some miracle, was able to fit a couch in here. So actually, as you can see, because this jets out, I was able to push the couch back enough where it's a comfortable distance from the TV, so it all works out. So here's the couch. It could fit two people, maximum. It's just a cheap thing from Nitori. I have my Wi-Fi router over there. This butt pillow my friend gave me for Christmas. And then I have my PS4, my Switch, and this huge TV. So I wasn't actually planning on getting a TV this big. It's like 45 inches, which is kind of crazy for the size of this apartment. 
but it was only like a few thousand yen more expensive at Costco, so I just went for it. And I do honestly play games, or at least watch YouTube or Netflix here every single day for many hours, so it's totally worth it. Right now I'm playing Genshin Impact. Also, this carpet is the softest thing ever. It's from Fran Fran. So, and then this is like a secret thing. It is a footstool ottoman thing, is that what you call it? But if you flip it, not only is there storage on the inside, but it also becomes my table that I eat dinner at. Yeah, this is like super convenient, but honestly, I really don't like the color. So I was thinking about changing it. So let me know if you guys have any ideas or solutions of what I could do here. Cause honestly, like the distance between this couch and the TV is not that big. I don't think I could fit like a real table here. I don't know what to do. Also right here, I have this little video doorbell thing. <laughs> Very easy to avoid the NHK people. All right, so that concludes the video tour and now I'm gonna talk about the rent, the layout, why it costs this much. So I moved into this apartment in August of 2020, so it's been about half a year since I moved in. And this apartment is a 1K, so that means it's one room and a kitchen. Basically, it's just a studio apartment. And my 1K is a whopping 22 square meters. It's quite small. But in Tokyo, this is kind of just par for the course. It, mine actually might be a little bit on the bigger side for someone's first place in Tokyo. So it's just a ginkan right there that's right into the kitchen where I'm standing. And then I have my bedroom, living room, office, all in one. And I have a bathroom with a separate toilet and bathtub room area. So the rent on this place, I'm sure you're dying to know, it's about 800 US dollars a month. What do you think? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? I mean, I don't know, it's Tokyo after all. So let me just tell you about some things that are contributing to make this $800 and not probably, I probably could have gotten this place for $650 if I moved like pretty far out of the city. So this building is actually about 30 years old, which is old for Japanese apartments. People here really like new buildings. They're constantly just tearing them down and restarting from the ground up. So actually that contributes to making this place cheaper. But then what brings it back up is that this room was redone just a few years ago. It's completely remodeled and gutted. And then what really brings the price up is that I have a separate bathroom area. And I know if you're looking at this just from an American mindset, for example, it's gonna just seem kind of like obvious, like what else would it be? But I'll put a picture right here of what a lot of bathrooms look like in units that are this size. But personally, for me, it was really important to have this separate bathroom area because I really like taking baths and I just like the space of the bathroom. I especially wanted a separate like sink vanity area, which actually was really hard to find. I could find a pretty good number of places with a separate toilet, but finding a separate sink that wasn't attached to the shower was really hard. So that, that whole area just, it really brings the price up. So I'm not going to say exactly the location I live, obviously, but I do live within the Yamanote line. So if you've been to Tokyo or you live here, then you probably know the Yamanote line is one of the most convenient train lines in all of Japan. It hits Shibuya, Ikebukuro, Tokyo Station, you know, everything big basically. So living on the line, like within walking distance, it's a little, it's a little far for me, but it is within walking distance, so just that luxury that convenience really drives the price up again and it is one of the reasons why i did choose this place even though i can't i can't really go anywhere right now <laughs> my main motivation for living here though was that it is within a pretty reasonable commute to school where i don't have to take a train i ride my bike so some of the bad things about this place that you can't really tell is that the building itself is actually more of an apartment style building rather than like a high rise, like mansion type, they call them here. So because it's this apartment type, there's only like six units in the building, including the landlords. So this means there's not any amenities like a garbage room or any like amenities. <laughs> and a lot of people who live here want the amenities like a garbage room, like a mail delivery box area, which we don't have. Next time I do move, I think I will prioritize these things. But I think it's fine just for someone who's, you know, in grad school, it's fine. Really, the one thing I don't like about the apartment the most is probably that it's not exactly soundproof. It's definitely more soundproof than my last place. 
here there is like a small degree of insulation i guess or soundproofing but i can like i can hear when they sneeze for example and i can hear the upstairs kind of like stomping a little so it's a little bit annoying but actually i'm pretty fortunate that my neighbor isn't really that loud of a person i'm probably the louder one playing my games until night so that's really the worst part and then some other good things i haven't mentioned yet are like it is on the second floor i don't really recommend women living on the first floor in tokyo also other than the yamanote line i am actually within walking distance of three other train lines maybe four wait five so actually that's pretty good but the bad part is, and actually why the rent I think is kind of reasonable for, you know, how convenient I am to these stations, is that I'm pretty far from all the stations. My closest station is a little over a 10 minute walk away, which, you know, considering that I live in like central Tokyo, it's a bit far. Personally, I don't mind it that much. It's just that there's not really anything happening in between the station and where I live other than convenience stores. So it is a little bit hard if I like I can't just walk out my door and get fast food, I guess. But you know, you know, I'm in, I'm in grad school. It's, it's fine. We have to gum on a little bit. So yeah, that concludes the apartment tour video. I hope you guys liked it. What do you think? If you have any suggestions for me, please let me know. I do think it's important to have a cute, to have a nice, like relaxing space. So I did put in a little bit more effort and money than I probably should have, but. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. My name's Allison. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this in the future. I'll see you next week. Bye!